Welcome to our ongoing APA style video series. In a previous video, we talked about how to format your references for website articles. But in a college level paper, you're also going to want to include more scholarly sources that you would find either in your library databases for your institution or via Google Scholar. Now I've got an entirely different video series on how to conduct academic research. So you're gonna to wanna to take a look at that in order to learn where and how to find these sources. But in this video, we're just gonna focus on once you've found them, how to format the references for them in your paper. Now, there are a few more elements involved when it comes to referencing scholarly journal articles than referencing website articles. You're still going to need your author or authors. You're still going to need a date. You're still going to need the title of the article, and you're still going to need some kind of URL or link. But in addition to that, you're going to need the name of the journal that the article was published in and you're going to need the volume number for that journal and the issue number for that journal, as well as the page range. From what page to what page in that journal was the article published in? I would never leave you hanging without some examples, so let's dive in. Here I am on Google Scholar where I've done a search for bipolar disorder. And let's say that I'm interested in the genetics of bipolar disorder. If I click that, I'm going to get a link for the scholarly journal article. Now, what information do I need here? As always, I want to start with my author or authors. Unlike website articles where sometimes I don't have an author, I'm almost always going to have an author for a scholarly journal article. In this case, I found two authors. I want to start with the last names and use the same order that they've used here. So I'll start with Barnett and then comma, first initial J, period, second initial H, period. Then I'm moving on to my second author, so I'm going to put a comma, and since the second author is my last author, I'll put a little ampersand symbol for and. Last name Smoller, comma, J, period, for the first initial, W, period, for the second initial. Now I've got to move on to my date. Here it is, 24 November, 2009. Unlike for website articles where I would put the full date, I only need the year for scholarly journal articles. So I'll open my parentheses, write 2009, close my parentheses, put a period. Next up is the title of the article. The title of this article is The Genetics of Bipolar Disorder. Just like for website article titles, I'm only capitalizing the first word and if there's a subtitle, the first word of the subtitle. So this one is already capitalized that way. I'll keep it that way. And unlike website articles, I'm not going to put this one in italics. So I just write out the title and I put a period. The reason it's not in italics is because now I'm going to add a new element that I don't have for website articles, the name of the journal, and that needs to go in italics. Now this scholarly journal is called apparently neuroscience. So I'm going to write that in italics and these titles, I do capitalize the way you normally capitalize titles. All of the more important words get capitalized. This one is only one word, but had it had multiple words, I would have capitalized all of the important words with the exception of little prepositions like of or articles like a or an, etc. All right, next up, I'm going to put a comma. I'm still in italics and I'm going to need to add the volume number. The volume number is right here. I don't actually have to write volume. So after my comma, I just write 164 in italics. Then after that, I'm going to need to add my issue number, which is right here. The issue number goes in parentheses and there's no space between the volume number and the parentheses. But the issue number in parentheses is not in italics. I know, very confusing. So 164 in italics, and then in non-italics parentheses with the number one inside since that is my issue number. I close the parentheses and then I've got another comma. I'm not in italics anymore and I have to add my page range. You see here it's from pages 331 to 343. You don't have to write pages, just the numbers. 331 343 period. Okay, now I'm almost done. 
What I do now is I look for something called a DOI that stands for Data Object Identifier. It's kind of like the social security number of your article on the web. And I can find that one right here for this article. It's listed as a URL, but you see that it says DOI within it. So that's your DOI link. You want to copy and paste that as your hyperlink. If you don't have a DOI, which happens sometimes, then there's something else you're going to do and we'll see that with our next example. Let's go back to my search. And let's say that I'd also like to use this first one is bipolar disorder overdiagnosed. When I click that, I get a PDF that looks like this. Here is our article. As always, we're gonna start with our authors. In this case, we've got four authors listed here. We want to list all of them in our reference. We start with the first one that they list, use the same order. Zimmerman, and then comma, M period. So only the first initial for the first name. Second one would be Ruggiero, comma, C period, J period. Remember to put commas between every author. So now comma again, Chelminski, comma, I period, and then Young, comma, D period. Now remember, we don't need to say PhD or MD or put any of their titles, just the names. Next up, we're supposed to put the date. Now this one is not right up here, somewhere convenient. So let's scroll and see. Okay, it's actually shown all the way at the bottom. You see here, June 2008. All right, for this particular article, we only need the year because we do not need to have the full date for journal articles. So open your parentheses, 2008, close parentheses, period. Next up is the title of the article. That's easy enough. Is bipolar disorder overdiagnosed? Now remember, you're only capitalizing the first word, so the rest of this will be lowercase. Go ahead and use the question mark as they use it. It's part of the title. If it didn't have a question mark, you would have put a period there. Next up is the name of the journal. Now, this is hard to find here. Scroll down again, and here it is. It's not psychiatrist.com because that's a website. So it should be J. Clin Psychiatry, which is actually Journal of Clinical Psychiatry. It's easy enough to guess that J is for journal and Clin is for clinical. If you have no idea, then you can just write it like this. This needs to go capitalized, journal, clinical, psychiatry, and it needs to be in italics. After that, we've got our volume number and our issue number. In this case, we don't see the words volume and issue to make it easy for us to find, but normally the volume and the issue number follow each other and the volume number goes first. So this 69 is our volume number and the six is our issue number. So after the journal name, you've got a comma, you stay in italics and you write 69 as your volume number, then remove the italics, open your parentheses, write six as your issue number, close the parentheses then another comma, and now we need our page range. Now this doesn't actually give us the page range, but we can actually see what page numbers everything is on. So it starts at 935, and then we would scroll all the way to the bottom, see where it ends, and include that as our final page. The last thing that we need is our DOI number, but I looked all over and I could not find a DOI number for this journal article. So that means we're gonna have to use our URL. Now, oftentimes you might find what you call a stable URL. If that's the case, then go ahead and use that. And if not, you can just go ahead and copy and paste the full URL that you have in your browser. As you can see, there is quite a bit that goes into a reference for a scholarly journal article, but there is a shortcut. So let's go back to our Google Scholar search. One of my articles was this first one, Is Bipolar Disorder Overdiagnosed? Now notice the little quotation mark symbol here. If I click there, APA, here is my reference. I can simply copy and paste this. So we've got all of the authors, all four of them, last name, comma, initial, last name, first and middle initial, and so forth. I've got the year, also in the correct format. I have got the title. I've got the name of the journal. In italics, I've got the volume number in italics, the issue number not in italics, comma, and the page range. Awesome. Next up, I also was using this article, The Genetics of Bipolar Disorder. 
Let's take a look at the citation there. And there you have it. APA, once again, your two authors, your year, name of the article, name of the journal in italics, volume number in italics, issue number not in italics, page range not in italics. So the only thing you're actually missing in these is that DOI number or URL. So you could copy paste from here, but then you would still have to make sure to add those in your references page. Whether you're researching on Google Scholar or in the library databases, there is always somewhere that you can copy the reference from. So you're probably wondering, why did I sit through all the minutia of every single element of the reference and where to find them if I can just copy paste? And that's a good question. <laughs> the answer to it is that it is important to actually know what it is that you're copy pasting. We should only really use shortcuts if we know how to do it the long way, because otherwise we're liable to make a lot of mistakes. All of these different shortcuts that you can find online for creating references in APA, those are created by a machine, not a human being. So there are often errors and it's up to you to spot those little errors. For instance, you don't have the DOI number when you copy paste, you need to know to add that yourself. And if you don't know what's supposed to be in the reference, you won't actually be able to spot the things that are missing or the things that are slightly off. So just make sure that you go ahead and use the shortcut, but that you keep in mind, you need to look at it carefully and make sure that everything is correct. So now you know how to format your references for website articles and scholarly journal articles, which are the ones you're most going to be using in academic papers. Of course, you might end up using some other types of sources, an electronic book, for example, or even something like a YouTube video, depending on what's acceptable for the type of paper that you're writing. If that's the case and you need further help, there are tons of resources online that show you how to format the references. One of the best ones that's really reliable is Purdue OWL. So this is Purdue University's online writing lab. So if you just Google Purdue OWL APA, then you've got everything you need. You can just look for how to reference a book, for example, and you will have all of the details there. So happy referencing. Maybe that's an oxymoron. Referencing is not that fun, but you got to do it. So reference away.